presenting, presenting the No Fucks Given Out on FGR with your host, The Unknown Factor. Cause yeah, it's time. You hear me? No fucks given hour. NFGR. I'm the unknown factor. And tonight, yeah, I think I might have to fucking spaz out a little. Sorry, because I got spaz a belly in the house. What's up, dog? Ah, uh, buddy. Thank you for having me, unknown. Hell yeah, dog. All day. Man, real quick, I just gotta say, dude, it's factor for short, sure, for real, right? Uh,. But why is it some people want to call me unknown? I'm curious because I've had a couple of people say that. I only say factor for short because I actually have a track that specifically states that. And there's also another gentleman I already know that goes by unknown. So I'm really not trying to, you know, get in on his shit. That's his shit. That's fine. I'm the unknown factor. So factor for short. Yeah. But why unknown? I'm curious, dog. Why did you pick that part of my name? Unknown? Yeah. Bro, you bounce around everywhere, bro. You're everywhere. You're absolutely everywhere. I'm not sure where you're going to go next. Left, right, up, down. Well, shit. I, I guess that makes unknown fairly accurate. I never thought of it that way, Spaz. Yeah, but that's kind of true. But the only reason you don't know is because, frankly, fuck, I don't know half the time, dog. That's just the truth, man. I just... Kind of, I'm like, hey, that looks shiny. Well, let's go get it. You know, fuck it. That's why we got Spasavelli in the house tonight, y'all. You hear me? Yeah, because listen, I know, man, I seen this fucker right here. Yeah, y'all fuckers listening know I seen this fucker right here recently. I actually performed with him at the All Out of Normal Tour. Yeah, well, I mean, he was running around. I just showed up at Pops, right? You know, and this motherfucker does a dope ass today show. I know that shit, dog. But can I just say, like, dude, your hair, it always throws me off when I see motherfuckers and they got hair like yours or worse. Like, how does that not just murder your ass on stage? Man, nah, it's all right, bro. The locks, you know, they do their thing, you know? I mean, it is a lot of heat retention. I heat up extra quick on stage, especially also wearing a hockey jersey all the fucking time. But, uh,. Fucking, it's just part of it, you know, it's a lifestyle, and I just embody that, you know, and uh, just peace and spirit of mind and fucking just uh, one with myself and my chakra energy. Man, I don't know that. That's one thing that, honestly, I, I need to adapt myself to, but that's, you know, some other shit. It's fucking like the heat. The heat's the one thing that really gets me on stage, dog. That's why I just is like, I'm performing a t-shirt and, jo- and shorts right now. Though I know it looks way better when I perform in my jumpsuit with my mask on, um, it also nearly puts me to the ground in a bad way, you know, and I know that, right? So, ask or going into that, dude, I'm curious, have you ever had an instance on stage, like, where you were just fucking, you knew you were about to hit the ground, and dog, what'd you do? Uh, Gore Fest 2009, underneath my old name, Body Bags. Uh, I ingested way, 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 way too many things. Let's just leave it like that. Drank way too much, and uh, about, I don't know, 10 minutes through my set, I ended up puking everywhere. Oh. And uh, the crowd loved it. The crowd ate it up, for the most part, and uh, they thought it was part of the set. And uh, I thought I was, like, overdosing or dying on stage. And... Uh, Basically, just try to keep breathing. I couldn't get through the rest of my set because I just kept puking, projectile vomit everywhere. So after that, I just kind of watch how much I party. Um, holy fuck, dog. Like, I can say I vomited in the middle of one of my sets, but yeah, it did kind of just play off. But the motherfucker did stop my set because he thought I was just dumb. But I have never projectile vomited, dude. Like, <laughs> that's... That's serious. Fuck, dog. He must have just went full retard. <laughs> like, shook it all. Full, full retard. Shout out to my boy Stogie on the All Out of Normal Tour. Yeah, shout out to Stogie. Yeah, check out that Sim shit. It's good shout out to Rimesick and everyone on that whole tour. Hell Absolutely yeah, amazing. Hell yeah. Fun hey, ass time. Hey, and check it for all you fuckers listening. If you want to know more about, well, I think everyone on that tour at this point, once I'm done with this interview, um, I've got interviews on the site for, I think, everybody. Yeah. Right? Do no, I? No, there was one more like local people. No, on the tour. Oh, I'm not. The tour, I mean, yes. we almost have that whole show covered. Yeah. But 
Yeah. We got everybody on the tour. Yeah. Yeah, so you can check out interviews on the No Fucks Given Hour for fucking all of these motherfuckers. So let's do what we do on the No Fucks Given Hour. Dog, dog, I'd like to get a little weird. I don't really like standard interviews. I want to see how much you spaz out, dog, and I want to know what you know about the arcane and the paranormal. And you ever had any encounters? Normal. Uh, I'm a non-practicing theistic Satanist uh, since I was 11 years old. Oh, wait. Oh, so what? So I don't know, the wait. last 15 years, and Hold I've been on. non-practicing the last three to four. Hold on. Hold on. You have to state that shit again. Theistic Satanist since the age of 11 years old. So theistic? that's 15 years. Uh, and the last three to four years, I've not been practicing. Okay. Oh, dude, can we get into that? You want to get into that, Spaz? I want to get into that because I know uh, Satan How far down the rabbit hole you want to go? Oh, dude, I like to go all the way. Yeah. Sorry. It's just my nature, right? But you said, what was the first part of that? Something Satanist? I can't. Theistic. Satanist. Theistic Satanist. What the fuck is that, dog? I mean, I know. A bit about Satanists. I'm not your Christian Satanist waving around Anton with a, yeah. you know, holding a satanic Bible. That's not me. Alright. So, can you give a brief description? Uh, I believe that the devil is a real entity. Um, opening your third eye with hallucinogens, drugs, uh, alcohol of the sort. Uh, I believe that hell is very real. What about heaven? Well, obviously, if there's one, there has to be another, but I think definitions are quite different than what people interpret them to be in the Christian Bible. Man, there are so many ways I want to take this conversation right now. Spaz, my mind can't make one up. So, Unknown, left, right, up, and down. Yeah, dude, it's true. So, well, we'll we'll go sideways because that just seems like a good direction, right? Do you go to you believe in purgatory? Uh, purgatory. I mean, what's your definition of purgatory? I don't know. What's your definition of purgatory? Uh, my definition of purgatory. <laughs> I mean, I come from a Catholic household, so I mean, you know, there's the classic definition of purgatory. But I, I really think that actually what we're living right now is more along the lines of purgatory, and death is our release. See, and through all religious texts and things that have been stated about what purgatory is, I would honestly be prone to agree with you that if anything was purgatory, it's the existence we have right now, because it's limited and According to everything said, it helps determine where you go, and that was kind of the definition of purgatory. You know what I'm saying? It was somewhere that you had to pay for whatever actions you had. So at a certain point, you can get into reincarnation with that, too. But I mean, that goes so multi-tiered, you get really fucked up into it, right? So that's my question. If you believe this is purgatory, do you believe there is just a heaven and a hell? Or do you believe there's more beyond that? I believe that there's more beyond that. Without a doubt, there has to be more than that. So I mean, every day you see like the minor, the minor things in life, the minor things. You know, the things that we take appreciate for our life, and this is truly purgatory. Then imagine what lies beyond. But, so, We're a small speck of dust in a fucking huge ass universe. Oh yeah. There has to be something more than this. Oh yeah, dude. I fully agree. Now. You say you do believe in the devil, but you don't believe in him as far as the the, the fucking Bible is concerned. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't believe in the Christian definition. I believe that the devil itself, you know, um, is much older, and uh, God itself, whatever you want to call it, you know, Jesus, Allah, God, whatever the case may be, much older than that. And say yin and yang, you need to have one without. You need to have one with the other. You can't have one without the other. And even, I mean, really getting toward the end of the day, it could really just be the same deity with two split personalities, but that, that's a whole other separate discussion. Oh, that's one I would love to have, though. <laughs> yeah, I like it, for real. So, fucking, man, it's fucking, so what do you call that religion? Dude, is there a name for the religion that you just described? Like, that's that's the religion you were practicing? Theistic Satanism, it combines a bunch of... Uh old school demonology and occultism 
And basically, I guess, if you were to like label it traditional Satanism, unlike uh, LeVay Satanism, which was formed, you know, in the 60s and 70s, which is really just, you know, counter-belief to uh, popular masses, you know, and uh, really just meant to kind of strike the uh, Christian religion in the wrong way. And uh, that's exactly its purpose and point. It really holds no depth. Okay, dog, I'll be real honest. You are going beyond my knowledge because I know nothing of this. You're making me very much wanting to research it, though. Um, as far as the Satanism, you know, the main thing I knew about Satanism was uh, there was a sect I know that they were ostensibly like what it was is they were just like, no, sins are just okay. And you shouldn't really be that, like, like don't be that uptight. Well, sister. no, I, 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 I live for myself. You see what I'm saying? And... You know, at the same time, I mean, there are similar characteristics at the same time, I guess, to LeVay Satanism, because it, it, it is a similar belief, and it is taken from mine. And, you know, but, like, you, you do live for yourself, and you just try to, like, I guess, live and let live, uh, I guess, simply put in a Christian format, you know, and just, like, you live your life and don't judge anybody else and just fucking, you know, do your own fucking thing in your own fucking lane, and... Of course, that includes a little bit of occultism and demonology and shit of the sort, but the whole point of the matter is, like, who am I to judge the next person next to me? That's their fucking business. You see what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, you know, we're all fucking men. We all bleed the same. And uh, we're all more than likely going to end up in the same place. You really think we'll all end up in the same place, man? I mean, honestly, I'd like to believe in reincarnation at the end of the day. I really would. Well, I mean, there's evidence of that because when a person flatlines, they lose two to two to three pounds, whatever the fuck the body weight is, immediately when they flatline. And if you've taken any fucking science classes in your fucking life, you know that energy cannot be destroyed; it simply transfers. So, going on that theory right there alone, basically reincarnation is possible, and the soul technically weighs two to three pounds. Or whatever the fuck you want to call it, chi, soul, life force. Man, I, I did never heard that as far as the two pound thing. Look it up. Man, see, here's the thing I hate sometimes for everybody listening. I want to know, like, someone will tell me some shit. And I'm like, no offense to whoever I'm talking to, but man, I'm like, what? No, I got to Google that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because... That's fucking, By all means. Yeah, that's fucking nuts. Um, God, how do you Google that, Spaz? Oh, see, I can't tell you. Oh, no, I just smoke a lot of fucking weed and dab up a lot, and, and I sit in front of Google, and shit just roams. Well, I mean, see, I kind of do the same thing, except unfortunately, yeah, dabs are, well, whatever, but, you know, I am where I am and whatever. Um... But I'm working on this damn radio, dude. I swear that's it. Like, I want more time to Google shit. Fucking. Um. So, man, I can agree with you in that, though, as far as the reincarnation. But here's my question as far as that. Do you think if that's the case, that we do reincarnate, you know what I'm saying? Then do you think it's just essentially a cycle? Like, yeah, I mean, it's essentially a cycle. I mean, who knows and who's what's to say. I mean, technically everything on this planet is living. So as far as you could be concerned, I mean, you could come back as another person for all we know, or you might come back as a dog, or you might come back as a fucking tree, or you might come back as God knows what the fuck, a fish, a shark, a whale. But the point of the matter is I, I'm not to know until I get to that point in time, and that's part of the fun. That's why I say death is like the final release, the final frontier. It kind of gives us the perspective of what lies beyond. What do you think? Do you think there's a possibility that it will be just nothing? I mean, of course, of course, it might just be a possibility that there's nothing, and I, I take that as well every day, and that also gives me comfort as well because you know what? If there is just nothing, then really, who's to say you made a fucking difference in a world with nine billion people that has history spanning a few thousand years? You know, so really, you know, everyone fades through the centuries and everyone fades through time. So this whole immortality shit, it's a little tiresome. 
Yeah, dog, it reminds me of a line from a comic book, which would be Deadpool. He's like, you know what's really boring? Immortality. And then he blows his fucking head off just so he can have a couple moments of peace. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes you just gotta I'm figure sure at that point it would be. You live for 500 years, you'd probably want to kill yourself a few times over. Yeah, and imagine being able to have that, dude. Like, like if you did get so fucking annoyed with life, you could just and you're like, I just want to go away for 20 minutes. So you just blow your fucking head off, and you know you'll be back in 20 minutes. It's just like a little nap. A little nap, come back with a headache. Yeah, for real. That... That would be fucked up, man. That would be... I think that would be the most terrible reincarnation you could ever fucking have, is just to have that power. That's why I think it's funny. Life, immortality, you cannot die, regeneration. Yeah, I I can see it. I can see it. It'd be fun for a while, Spaz, it would. Yeah, and then after a while, you'd become a spiteful little fuck, killing everyone just for fun and pleasure, and then it just becomes pointless at that point, just becomes second nature. I don't know, dude. I really feel with that, there's a couple different routes you could go, you know, as a person. I don't think, any, like, it would depend on who you gave it to, what route they would go, you know. There's a couple, you know. And I don't want to see any of them personally. I sure shit wouldn't want to live through them. Me, I'd rather fucking flatline. Yeah, my spazzavelli. We'll be right back, y'all. Hey! What the hell, man? Spaz. What happened? I I played the demo. (laughs) Wait. No. You played the right version. Part of my cigarette package. Didn't I? Didn't I have... What the fuck? I thought I had a full... A full flat line. What happened, Spaz? I'm confused. No. I don't know. You downloaded that. I, well, I thought you said you were sending it too, though. I thought you said you already had it, so I didn't send it for that reason. Well, son of a bitch. It's like desolation in this motherfucker then. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back, y'all. I need my script. I'm going to take two. Take two. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? This is Shell Shell and you're listening to No Fucks Given Radio, obviously. What the fuck are you doing here? We're so deep in the underground, we're in the sewer. And we don't need a fucking rat. You hear me? Yeah, we're here for motherfucking combat. <laughs> Court's adjourned. Yeah, we're back. Yeah, I mean, FGR. No fucks give it out. I'm still the unknown factor, I think. Maybe. I don't know. He keeps calling me unknown. I said it was factor for sure. But then he gave me an explanation. And, like, I was like, fuck, man, that makes sense. But, eh, fuck it. Whatever, Spaz. It's all right. I don't give a no fuck. That's what's up. So, we're going to get a little bit more into some shit, dog. I'll tell you, I want to know how long you've been doing this shit. Uh, since 2004. Two- Damn. How old are you? I'm 26. Oh, oh wow, man. Pfft. Damn. And I've been performing since 2005. Damn, dog. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I took a six-year break, <laughs> but uh, I'm back now, so. Well, I want to go into a couple things then, right? Like, you see, you've obviously been on the scene for a while. Would you always... Uh, down in uh, down in Colorado. No, no, I'm originally from New York City. Okay, yeah, duh. Wait, yeah, okay. So, when did you move to uh, Colorado? Uh, eight months ago. Oh well, shit, that was very recent then. So I'm curious, dog. Um, in those two music scenes specifically, like how how like how do you think they are? You know what I'm saying? Doing, uh, what do they have to hold in those two areas comparably? Can you repeat that? Look, those two areas of the underground, just ostensibly, what do you think of them? And comparably, what what are the pluses and the negatives in them both? Being in the underground? Yeah, but in those two areas, in both New York and Colorado. New York, it's a lot harder than uh, Colorado. Uh, New York, post 9-11, uh, 
all our small venues basically shut down one by one by one, and our club scene was bought out eventually by Live Nation. What's Live Nation? Uh, Live Nation is the ticket holder and uh, concert promoter um, across North America. You like how I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck that is, dog. I ain't gonna lie, for real. I ain't never heard of that shit in my life. Like, yeah, Live Nation, they're worth a few billion, and uh, they were just incorporated a few years ago. It's a media conglomerate, basically, to buy out venues or rent venues and uh, handle all of that. Oh, so it's something ungodly terrible for us all. I get you. I get you. All right, all right. Clear, dog. Totally. So they're the enemy. <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, God. That's fucking terrible, dog. I mean, sincerely, when you state it like that, that's all that I think, dude. Because corporations are fucked, man. And I wasn't aware that there was a corporation like that. going. I mean, it doesn't really surprise me, though. I mean... I mean, like, small music recently just came back to New York with, like, the hipster trend, unfortunately, and that's part of the reason why I left New York. You know, these kids had money fucking spoon in their mouth and shit like that, earning these checks, talking about how they're fucking poor as fuck. They don't have a job, don't do anything, you know, they fucking lounge around and go to the bar life. And, like, New York just got filled up with that. I, could, I got tired of that shit. I had to get the fuck up out of there, man. And, um... Denver's has been refreshing because Denver things just come that much more rapidly, actually, compared to New York. There's a lot more opportunity out here, ironically, and everyone says New York is the city opportunity. No, I'd say Denver is by far. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess at what this answer is gonna be, but why do you think that is? New York is uh, way more. Big corporation based, which gives no fucks about the small people like us. They just care about, you know, the shit that's on the radio. They care about people trying to imitate the shit on the radio. They don't care about creativity or individuality. And uh, here in Colorado, you have a lot more mom and pop out here in this whole region, actually. You have a lot more mom and pop, you know, locally owned venues and, uh, you know, um, it's the economy that way, you know, because. It ends up being, rather than just lining the pockets of record executives and uh, top notches at record labels, you're basically helping out, you know, small labels, you know, and actually people putting in real work. Yeah. You know, rather than just computer and hitting a few fucking keys. Yeah, fucking auto-tune, dude. I agree. <laughs> I straight had motherfuckers one on this okay. station and I listened to their music and it was auto-tuned to shit. And I was like, no, dog, I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I worked at Sony during the auto tune phase, and it was absolutely awful. Uh, everything that came across my desk, auto tune it, slap and stick, and and they call it the record industry for a fucking reason, you know, because everything is just compressed, condensed, compartmentalized, and fucking, you know, put into small boxes, and people know it's a little shit, and fucking is just out, you know, putting out a product as quick as possible, right? In this fashion, time period that exists, and then catching on to the new one when it becomes available. Now, where did you work at Sony? You like? Uh, I entered the Hit Factory in Florida, and I worked in New York. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and all you man, see, I couldn't deal with that dog. Like I couldn't. Like I said, I only got a, I only got a chance. Well, I mean, I've I've seen you live, and I dig your shit live, but I only honestly got a chance to check out the one, uh, the. Man, I swear to God, I had because I was listening to the full demo. Of that I, man, I I know I have the full version of that somewhere, Spaz. I swear to God, because I listened to it in my car and it was way longer than forty five seconds. So I don't know what the fuck I did, but I'm gonna guess my computer just ate it for the moment. You know, whatever. Computer, <laughs> PC error. Chalk it up to Windows. Fuck you, fucking Windows. It's probably watching this right now on some kind of bullshit camera. I didn't even know it was building the screen. But that's besides the motherfucking point. You know what I'm saying? Um, I lost my point, Spaz. God damn it. That's terrible. This is why I swear I should take notes as I speak because I switch things so quickly. It, yeah, the un, yeah, it works, man. Whatever. Um... <laughs> Fuck it! Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put Spaz in a box. What do you think, babe? Babe, should we put Spaz in a box? Yeah! Yeah. 
It's custom built for you, dog. Look, I knew just the height and everything to build it to. I made it a little extra big, though, man, because I'm shipping this motherfucker. You know that, right? Right? To this island I set up that has no escape. Hear me? Got a wall around it, make Donald Trump fucking envious with just, ah, terribly, right? So you ain't getting out this bitch, dog, for real. That's just what's up. I'm sorry. I'd do it to everyone. At least you didn't get sharks with lasers and motherfuckers. It, it could be worse than a wall. I promise you. That's besides the point, right? Check it though. On this island, dog, I got you set up plus. Everything you'll ever fucking need, dude. Like, you're going to be good to live the rest of your life on the supplies that I left you and everything at this house. F2 and including dabs and whatever. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? But, man, I didn't leave you with no kind of entertainment because... I don't know, man. I just didn't feel like I should choose your entertainment. You know what I'm saying? But there ain't a whole lot of room in this box. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to have to keep this shit limited. I'm sorry. All right? So I want to know what three of these you going to have me get you so you can take and entertain yourself while you're on the island. What three CDs am yeah. I going to take to entertain myself on a fictional island? Yeah, you're stuck here forever, dog. That's the only music you ever get again. Uh, Flatliners, Under Satan's Authority would be number one. Uh, Grave Diggers. Killer Army. Yeah. Those three right there. Fuck dog, that's terrible. I'm not familiar with any of them. Killa Army is a Wu Tang affiliate. There's a lot of like political shit in the nineties. You know, like terrorism, bomb your whole squad, bomb your building. A lot of five percent nation shit in there too. And uh grave diggers, you know, one eight hundred suicide. And uh flatliners, oh. you know, Satan is live evil, you know, the classics and staples of horrorcore. What actually is horrorcore. Wait, no. How old where, where, when is that shit from? What era? Give me that. Uh, 94 to 99. 94 to 98. Uh, oh, excuse me, dog. My bad. Um, fuck, man. You feel me? Make me feel like I gotta do some fucking research now, Spaz. Cause, yeah, I don't know. Like, when I think original horrorcore, as far as where it started, the thing that I that brings to, or that comes to my mind, man, is, uh, Esham, Nottis, you know, fucking Mastermind, them motherfuckers. I mean, horrorcore even predates that. Horrorcore can be traced back to, like, 1984, 1985, you know, and it bounced around a lot from coast to coast to coast, but, you know, there was burner rap, there was wicked shit, there was acid rap, there was, you know, horror shit. Different variations, different names for it, but still boils down to the same concept, uh, concepts and the same fucking ideas at the end of the day. Now, here's a question for you then. I'm curious, why do you think it is that there are so many, even even within horrorcore, there are so many different divisions as far as, you know, you've got, you've got horrorcore, you've got the wicked shit, you've got acid rap, you've got fucking gore hop, you've got, you know, why do you think it is people want to make so many different divisions of that? As opposed to trying well, to I mean, together. like, Gore Hop, I can definitely say is, like, they, they definitely do their own thing that has a signature sound within that. LSP does their own thing. So oh, yeah. I definitely go within the right, you know, for them to call themselves Gore Hop. Sutter Kane, you know, the way that he continuously does the metals and sampling with Donnie Darko and uh, Jim Snuka, you know, like, that's why Never So Deep is affiliated, you know, so reasonably with Ghetto Metal, you know. So, I mean, like, I do see points within it, but also at the same time, I think there's a stigma by using the name horrorcore. You know, people people hear horrorcore and they automatically associate to, you know, ICP, which in a lot of mainstream like, commercial labels' eyes is absolutely frowned upon. You know, and I really think is a horrorcore act at the end of the day, through and through, you know, like, at the end of the day, through and through, pretty much. I mean, with a little bit of balance, but... You know, I mean, Flatbush Zombies, you know, uh, even though it's a lot of 808 shit in there, you know, it's like horrorcore concepts, like, throughout, you know, it's just labeling yourself that is, I guess, a stigma, and I, I don't think it's a stigma, you know, I, I think it's actually something to be positive about if you represent it correctly. See, 
that's um now you're saying you don't think it should be a stigma i caught that right right i i don't think it should be a stigma because i believe if you do it right and you actually represent horrorcore for what it is and horrorcore is not just murder rape death stayed in kill kill chop stab just that you know it's the atrocities that you experience in life it's the everyday suffering you know that's around you it's the everyday depression it's the everyday you know just anguish or building up the rage so on and so forth not just this limited concept that has been for the last few years you know and i do think there are exceptions to the rule obviously you know like there's isham you know um he did a lot of innovative stuff in the early 90s you know um that really pioneered you know what we what we call horrorcore uh, even though I don't think himself is horrorcore necessarily, I think he he kind of balances out here and there. Um, you know, I think horrorcore is actually something much darker. So, let me just ask then: like, what would you call? Like, who would you really call true horrorcore on the scene now? That's you know on a large level. Um, I'd really say you know like. Insane poetry, you know, I got to hear a lot of the Violent Art album and uh, the album coming out. And, uh, oh my God, shit is just disgusting and it does justice for the genre. Um, I really, really dig the new Schizo album that came out, um, Butterfly Effect. Um, I mean, then going back chronologically, you know, there's Big L, you know, coming out of Harlem and then there's like the Flatliners and they just recently made a comeback. Um, so, like, they're doing their own thing, and, um, I mean, they pioneered the actual term horrorcore, so I think if anyone was to really answer that at the end of the day, I think it would be properly done by them, but um, I, I really feel it's been watered down tremendously, you know, the last 10 years or so. You know, I grew up in a day and age, you know, with, like, Doza Demon, Shy One, uh, you know, Bio Killers, hey, a lot say, of, you know... Wait, did you say Doza Demon? Yeah. That's funny as hell. Yeah, I used to listen to a lot of devil shit back in the day. You oh. know, like Crucifix, the Evil Pimp, um, you know, like Bury You in My Backyard. You know, that, that was my shit, you know. Um, that no. Memphis devil shit. Yeah, I say that's funny, Spaz, because that's my producer. Yeah, we had this conversation. Oh, we'll see... Whatever. They didn't know. Oh, I might get drunk, but I got a good memory. I might get drunk, but I got a good memory. Well, I don't. I talk to too many people, dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> My, like, all the conversations really start to blur. And I, I, I'll tell you the main thing that's starting to make that happen is the fact of all the conversations I have on air. You know what I'm saying? And it gets to the point, especially because, like... There's just shit I can't say on air, and that's just the truth of it. And it, like, I have to like remember what that is, so I just try and forget it. That way, I don't say it, and it makes me forget other shit. What can I say, Spaz? Fuck. <laughs> you know, forget shit. You know, I mean, I suppose it's good. It makes me a trustworthy guy. You can tell me all kinds of shit. I'll forget that shit tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh shit. That's fucking terrible. You know what I'm saying? But dude, I fucking feel what you're saying as far as water down. So hey, I wanna know though, check it. When you look at the underground as a whole, not just those areas, but as a whole, dog, what do you think of it? Especially in the horror course scene. You know what I'm saying? With what's going on right now. Cause I mean, there's a lot going on right now. Fucking we got that shit with with the dude with psychopathic with Will who's Who's having an issue, and I don't know, did they ever start live streaming, babe? Yeah, we can, we can press play. We, we should be done in 22 minutes. Okay. Minute. So, we, we actually, they have started live streaming, right? You know, so that's apparently what's up. You should uh, hit play real quick, babe, and then hit pause is what you should do, right? That way it starts as, as far as we can get, because we want to know what the fuck's going on with this dude. <laughs> for real, because if that's what's up with oh, psychopathic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's some fucked up shit, right? That's the truth. And then, I mean, you got everything gathering, moving down to Colorado next year. You got my fucking LSP doing what they're doing. 
right, which is fucking, I mean, they're doing some shit, right, I see rhyme shit cutting up, fucking, I see, man, I see all kinds of motherfuckers just, like, changing it, like, Magic Ninja and, like, what the fuck they're doing, so there's a whole dog, what do you think is, because I feel like, dude, I feel like the underground is, is up for a change, do you know what I'm saying? I, I do feel it is. I feel there's a lot of new blood coming into the game, but I feel that Twisted with M and E is making a lot of the moves that Psychopathic should have been. You know, I think I think they have their uh, hand on the pulse a lot more than Psychopathic does. You know, I'm not feeling Blase Rose is a traditional hip hop head at all. Uh, I'm just gonna state that for the record. I really don't care. Um, and then as far as like. The Killjoy Club, like, I think that's too little too late, and, like, letting Twisted go, and letting, you know, it it, it, it just fucked them over in more ways than they, I think they really understand at this point, and I'm just being blatant with it, I mean, yeah, they still have the following, but it's not what it was, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, they're not getting new fans like they used to, and I don't think they really quite see what's happening. I mean, yeah, gathering attendance is record, and yeah, but like they have to rehash Riddlebox. They have to go back to the original six Joker cards in order to get people to turn out. See, that man, fuck it, I don't give a fuck. Um, that's the thing, like, the main reason, in my opinion, the gathering, like, I would have loved to have fucking gone to the gathering this year for one main reason, the Wizard of the fucking Hood in its entirety. Like, I'll give it up for that. I'll give it up for that. But, I mean, I will. But no, dog. Again, but at the end of the day, like the really, answer. like you asked me, you know, what's a smarter, what's a smarter decision, basically. So I'm going to tell you, like, in your opinion, what's a smarter signing, Blase Rose or Gmo Ski from Psychopathic or MNE? What's a better signing at the end of the day? I think Gmo Ski is at the end of the day. I mean, look, it's a more diverse crowd. It's more units sold. It's not subjectifying anything. You know, it's breaking out of the threshold. No face paint. None needed. Just fucking talent, you know what I mean? And I think M and E is just representing a lot more talent quality wise. I and then yeah. also uh, all my brothers at LSP holding it down too, like they're definitely doing their thing. So I have to give it up to them. And yeah. then uh, also my brothers at Body Bag Syndicate, Dead Media. Uh, congrats to them throwing down the fucking gathering this year. Uh, you know, so many congrats to everyone and much success for everyone if we're going forward. Hell yeah, man! Hell yeah! So for real, when I when I had to start this radio station, I was going to have to cancel a bunch of interviews on a bunch of motherfuckers, and I didn't want to, like, cancel 12 interviews. So I was like, fuck it, I'll start a station, right? Like, I really didn't initially know what I was doing, but now I've just come to the conclusion my only goal, dude, is to spread the motherfucking wicked. Yeah, regardless of what it may be, this is The Wicked featuring Bloodshot by Spazzavelli. We'll be right back, y'all. Biscuit, can you do a drop real quick? Oh, shit. Right yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, what up? It's your boy, Biscuit. Say hi. Say hi. Hello. Say hello to my little friend. Word, what up? It's your boy, Biscuit. Represent Rhyme Sick Nation to the fullest on No Fucks Given Radio. <laughs> I'm videotaping this for scientific research. This shit will be on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge me, monkey. Check me out at www.rhymesick.com. You can catch me at, at Facebook, The Only Biscuit. I repeat, that is The Only Biscuit. You got skills. Catch me on my SoundCloud again, The Only Biscuit. Come rock that shit with us again on No Fuss Given Radio. Mad love, mad love. What is that ringing? <laughs> Do I have a tumor? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. It's loud right now. I can't even hear what's going on, bro. It's just trying to get it done. So, Rand's downstairs. Yeah, we're back in FCR. No fucks given out. Check it out. I am still the unknown factor. I still got Spazabelli in the motherfucking house. Yeah. And you know what I just realized? Man, like, you picked three CDs, and then we got sidetracked. And I didn't finish shipping you off to this goddamn island, did I? What? I said I didn't. Finish, you cut out, bro. I didn't finish shipping you off, did I? Like I gave you three ah, CDs. Shit. Yeah, I gave you three CDs, and then we got into a long ass conversation 
about it. I didn't know none of that shit. But check it out. He did enough research. Take these goddamn CDs and get back in your box, Spaz. We ain't done. Yeah, because... I still got an island I set up, and man, I ain't not gonna ship you to it. I custom make each one of these motherfuckers for each artist. God damn, I can't not use it. That'd be a terrible waste of funds. And let's face it, there's enough of that in this country, right? So what I want to know, dog, right? You got your music. What three board games you gonna take so hopefully you don't lose your fucking mind? What board games? Yeah, you're all alone, mind you. Uh, chess. Keep the mind sharp. Nice. Uh. Battleship. Hell yeah. Just to be funny with myself. If I have to play that for eternity, I'll play that with myself. Fuck it. I'll still cheat both ways. Yes. Uh. I don't know the third one, bro. Fucking, I don't know, a deck of cards. No, no, no. That is not a board game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't have a deck of cards. Solitaire will get you by for a long while. I know it will. play poker with coconuts. I I don't allow that shit, though. You don't allow that shit? I'll give you, like, I'll give you, like, Uno or some shit. Scrabble, then? I don't fucking know, bro. Scrabble, yes! Dude, that's a good one, dog. For real, because that helped keep your mind sharp as well. But you didn't end up making up words. You know that. And then you ended up challenging yourself, and how would that go over? <laughs> no dictionary, hell yeah. No, you man. Know. No, see, here's the thing. I'm not just leaving you with those couple things, dog. I will leave you a couple books as well, because I left a bit more spare room in this box. So what three of those are you going to take? Three books. Uh, are you going to be able to spell check yourself? That's all I want to know. Spell check myself. Uh, I guess I'll take a thesaurus with me. The source dictionary. Whoa. Spaz? Hello? What up, yeah. dog? What up? My bad about that. I'll take a uh, the source dictionary combo. I'll allow it. Uh, I'll take the satanic verses from Salman Rushdie. Never heard of it. Uh, well, they issued a fight while on him, and he was banned in his own country, and he went into hiding. They were trying to kill him for years. Oh, that's always good art. You know that. If you almost got killed over your art, it was some good shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's how you know it's good. Yeah. You got one more, dog. Uh... Cabinet of Curiosities by Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. Damn, dog. It's like the Da Vinci Code if it took fucking math. That sounds painful. Way more murder. Ah, uh, hey, that's always good. I hardly approve of that. Damn, dog. You're making me want to run to the goddamn bookstore. Like I shit you not, but I can't do that. I gotta run and get you some fucking VHS tapes for this VHS player I left you right with a badass motherfucking screen. Don't let it fall on you, dog. You will die, guaranteed. I'm sorry, so just don't let it fall. That's all I'm saying, right? You got a VHS player though, right? Cause that's that's man, that's all I had. What can I say, right? Right? So I wanna know, dog. You got two more. Well, technically four more things you're gonna take with you, but the first is gonna be three. Three movies or TV series, whatever you desire. Dude. You can take any combo. I don't give a fuck. Two, two, or two, fucking one, one, two. I don't give a fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? But you only get three in the long run. And as far as TV series, you only get it up to the point it's currently two. But you get all that shit. What you want, dog? Uh, I'll take the Simpsons series. Oh, nice. That won't give you no fucking bitch ass fucking point where it's like almost. Or like some cliffhanger bullshit, really, either. So that's good. That's good. You got and two I'll take the Flintstone series. Oh, hell no. I approve. Hell yeah. It's the original nice. fucking sitcom that all that shit's based off of. Hell yeah, dog. 
Fucking, and then the last one, Dark City, the movie from 98 or 97. Oh, fuck yeah! Yeah! Yes, man, this is Excellent motherfucking choice, dude. I love that flick, dog. I'll even get you the director's cut. It's got like three cuts. Just because you got excellent fucking taste in film. I don't give a fuck. That's how many VHS they like. So you got like three fucking tapes just for Dark City. Because I gave you like three different cuts. Because that's, that's an excellent selection. I just happen to have them on deck. I'd be bootlegging shit. What can I say? But what are you going to do? Yeah. So you got one more item you get to take to this island, dog. And I'm sorry. No take backs on the VHS tapes when you realize what this last one is right it's a pocket pussy dog here's the thing though it's special you get to mold it after whoever the fuck you want living dead animated i don't give a fuck uh huh let's go with the virgin mary holy shit no wait pre or, wait, before or after birth? You know what I'm saying? You're going to get her before the baby came out or before, after the baby came out? I want to oh. know. <laughs> no, you only get one, fucker. All right, so let's get one from before, from Immaculate Conception. Oh, hell no. Oh, shit. Man, for real. Um, yeah, for real. That just, that it's not right. It made you chuckle. We'll be right back, y'all. Hello, it's me, Mr. Cannibal Crazy. <laughs> no fucks given radio dot com with the unknown factor. <laughs> Facts are, he knows a lot more than he's leading on to believe. I think so it is, Michael. Be one of us. <laughs> Woo! I love. No fucks given radio dot com. I love no fucks given radio dot com. Join us! Join us! It fucking rocks. <laughs> Woo! Don't think about doing it, Lewis. Mr. Cannibal Cravings is evil. Contact me. Or check me out through Facebook, Cannibal Cravings Facebook page. Or you can check me out on YouTube, Mr. Cannibal Cravings. Sometimes that is better. <laughs> and, 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 and if I catch you being a piece of shit out there, I'm going to slit your throat. I'm going to motherfucking cut you into little pieces. And I'm gonna cook you in a mother fucking marinette sauce and I'm gonna eat you. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die out of here. <laughs> so don't be a piece of shit. Listen to nofucksgivenradio.com. What do we do? Why don't we just. Wait here for a little while. See what happens. You've got me, Mr. Cannibal Crazy, and I am what I eat. That makes me a corpse. <laughs> Double the word. And I'm fucking causing like two, three seconds of dead air. My bad, y'all. Fucking, huh? Hey, that guy voluntarily uh, quit. His job and he's not on the show tonight. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so real quick update, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry but not to interrupt your interview, Spaz, but Will <laughs> voluntarily quit his job and is not on the show tonight yeah. on over a psychopathic uh yeah, the uh, fucking boy fucking god I can't that's terrible. Psychopathic radio. Right? Yeah. What do you think of that, dog? He quit his job and no showed an interview he was scheduled for. What do you make of it? I think it's all shame. Shame. Shame on you, sir. You need to go commit Harry Carey, motherfucker. I'm sorry, Will. That's just what I think. Because, dude, for real, if you bounced out like that, you had, like, I don't know. I'm sorry, dog. 
I don't like motherfuckers to touch little kids. I got a problem with that shit. You know, like at a Dexter level. I saw, what can I say? Uh, God damn, dog, that's terrible shit. I, well, good riddance. I don't, I mean, man, I don't know what to make of that, dude. The fact that he, like, bounced like that. that's fucking said weird. He didn't, want, he didn't want to bring all that negativity to the company. Oh, he didn't want to bring, is that what he said? Yeah. He didn't want to bring all that negativity to the company. What do you think of that statement, Spaz? I'm curious. Like, if you. I ru- think he was fired, but I think he just politely stepped down in his firing. And that was the issued statement to avoid further fucking discount. Bullshit, I think it's a cop out. Agreed, 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 and motherfucking agreed, dog, shit. Yeah, I can't, I can't do nothing but agree with you on that. I mean, God, yeah, dog. Like, bro, I'm a father, bro, like, you tell me child molester, like, I got no respect for you off the bat, right <laughs> off the bat. Oh, dude, I got less than no respect for you at that point. I have malice. You know what I'm saying? Amen to that. Like, like. Been just for that. Uh, like, I, I got a problem with those kind of people, man. Like, I don't know. He kind of makes me, like, like, if psychopathic knew, in my opinion, that's more of an issue. And I think that's what needs to be addressed now. I'm sorry. I think they had to know. They don't do background checks on their fucking employees. Give me that shit. That's How much true. money are they making a fucking year? Yeah, they're fucking doing background checks. If they're not, that's on them. That's double on them, then. I seen some motherfucker posts like, you think they do background checks? I was like, goddamn well, I hope so. You know what I'm saying? I'm well, I mean, it's all toast. Think about it this way. You talk about family and all this other shit, bro, but then you have a child molester in your ranks, bro. Like, what does that say? That's the creepy uncle coming to fucking Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, see, and the weirder thing, like, have you read Behind the Paint? Yeah. Okay, so for anybody that's read Behind the Paint, I mean, I, I, I guess it's a public issue, so it's okay to bring up. And if it's not Jay, I apologize. I'm not trying to offend you, but you know, he had an issue with that back in the day, right? I mean, I'm remembering that properly, aren't I? Yeah. Okay, I wanted to say, and we won't go any farther than that, fuckers, if you want to, he, there's a book about it, go buy that shit, it's an excellent book, Behind the Pain, they ain't paying me shit to say that, I just think it's a good goddamn book. Hell, go on eBay, get the audio tape, and listen to him say it to yourself. Oh, see, and he, he did that, he, it's him talking? <laughs> that was supposedly one of the goodies from The Gathering this year. Yeah, see, I've seen... I've seen it around. Oh, you man. can go pick up the audio tape and you can go listen to him tell it to you yourself. See, so you I have didn't... to read it in print. Oh, see, that'd be cool just to have him tell the story. Like, because I wasn't aware that it was him. I just haven't, because uh, I haven't, I honestly hadn't had the time to look at it that goddamn close. He was like, hey, fucking an audio book. That's dope. And I was like, but I've already read it, so I don't need the audio book. That's just the fucking truth of it. You know? Um,. But yeah, coming from him, I, I think that it's be especially. So pick that shit up, y'all, for real. That shit's dope, you know. But that's what I find it so odd about them being willing to keep him in the ranks, you know. And then they bring in Blase Rose, and she tells her whole fucking story. And it's, it's some shit on that level. And then you're telling me they've got that kind of person hired and either weren't aware of it or didn't give a fuck and just turned the other fucking cheek, was like, oh, it's good. That's what I'm saying. I think it's the latter. I hey, think it's definitely they turn the other cheek to that. There's no way you can't know. All I want to know. Go to Google. It takes five fucking seconds. Yeah, yeah. All I want to know real quick is who just called in. It's fucking messing, yo. Oh, Hey, for real. how you doing, sir? Look at that. How messing. the fuck are you guys doing, huh? Pop it in out uh, of nowhere. How you doing, bro? What's good? Nothing, just chilling. I just actually stepped back into the house. It's like I'm going to fucking give the fucking... Spazza Valley a call. Hell That's yeah. That's what I'm talking about, mate. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. For everybody don't like know this. Like this the entire fucking tour speaking in British for the yeah. last two days. Southern draw. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Man, I ain't joined in on that yeah, shit. bro. Like, we got the whole tour package speaking British. Fucking oh, Australian yeah. mixture. Like, the whole tour through. Butchered. Absolutely awful. 
And uh, last two days, it somehow switched to fucking Southern Draw. All I know is, you know, I've seen a lot of you two fucking torturing a lot of motherfuckers on tour on Facebook. Mainly you messing, actually. Talking about, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah hey. no, messing, messing with the terrorizer on tour. <laughs> yeah, that was the tip. I'm telling you, everybody knows now, like, if you go on tour with me, like, expect to not get any fucking sleep, you know what I'm saying? Wake up, cold, butt net. Yeah, no, nah, me and Messer were just talking about I still have PTSD from that tour. I'll be waking up fucking <laughs> slightest movement and that. Like, hell no, nah, you're not getting me on videotape. No, Going man. over, throwing the blade over my head and shit. You gotta pull that shit like Static did. Hey, hey, hey. No, and then just go back to sleep. <laughs> I think I did all right for him telling me he wanted my facial hair. Ah, uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, that was good. Hey, Spazzy, share some of your mustache with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell no hey fuck it messing we were having a fuck did, did you hear the discussion we were having messing I'm curious I kinda I kinda uh, caught a little bit of it I caught a little bit of it well what exactly were you guys talking about uh the shit with man I know you've seen that shit with Will I don't remember the dude's last name it's psychopathic the fucking all that shit oh the fucking raper dude yeah well, you know, he was supposed to be online on Psychopathic Radio tonight, right? Yeah, I heard about that. Well, my wife just informed me that he bounced out. Like, he apparently resigned and then was like, fucking, hey, um, I'm just leaving because I don't want to bring this on the company. And he walked away from his job. And he's not even on the interview. What do you think of that shit, dog? I mean, all I'm saying is that sounds like a fucking guilty conscience to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, for him to especially be like, I'm not trying to bring this to the label. You know what I'm saying? Like, to completely remove himself from the picture, that's a big that's a big thing. Like, I think it would be different if, like, if, if dude didn't do it, he could sit down and be like, well, I didn't do this. Unless Jay was like, look, we don't need this fucking kind of look for the label and shit like that. But if that was the case, why would they have put him on in the first place? Like, you would figure that they're doing some type of background check on these people, you know what I'm saying? But with that being said, I, I really think that dude fucking is guilty. I think he really did some shit and really don't don't want to bring that shit to the label. Do you really think it's that he doesn't want to bring that shit to the label, or do you think he just doesn't want to, that shit brought to light like that, like, so publicly? Oh, yeah, yeah, both. both. It's definitely both. Uh... As a human being, I can only say, like, he definitely doesn't want all that shit brought upon himself. You know what I'm saying? Like, out of everybody in the world, I'm sure dude knows what he did. You know what I'm saying? Like, the last thing he needs is fucking thousands and thousands of people telling him he's a piece of shit. Like, he knows. Oh, it's still going to happen. And, oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's a, uh, that's a, uh, inevitable, you know. That's oh, really? He's going to get a Jerry moment. <laughs> he's going to get a yeah. Jerry moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That motherfucker's already getting shit on all over online, dude. Like, that's all I've seen. I swear. Like, half the posts on fucking my Facebook are, fuck this dude. Oh, yeah, and I don't care what nobody says. Like, I, I've been a juggalo since I was seven, and, like, all I'm going to say is, like, I know that if there was one thing that people ain't down with, and if it's the juggalos, it's fucking statutory rape, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? That's like, man, and do you got a hatchet man tat, dog? Do I what? You have a Hatchet Man tattoo. Oh, I don't. I don't. But I do keep my Hatchet Man necklace. I don't rock it anymore, but I do have it still. Oh, hey, Spaz, do you have a Hatchet Man tattoo? You do, don't you? <coughs> no, I don't have a Hatchet Man tattoo. Oh, you don't? I could have sworn you did, dog. Nope. <laughs> no Hatchet Man. Well, fuck you both. Well, let's ask a theoretical question then. Because I do, <laughs> right? Oh, fucking God, I thought, man, I thought you'd have one messing as many fucking tasks as you got. And- Cover it up with the MNE skull logo. There you go. Skull lungs. There you go. Straight ahead. Just do that. Save yourself the trouble. True. So, yeah, everybody, I mean, it's, it's, I, because I love magic ninja and I feel like, I, God damn it. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? What if them motherfuckers turn this man? Because I've only got four tasks, dog. I'd love to have more, but that's just. Monetary issues, bullshit, and I don't really know what good tattoo artists just be cool with shit like that. Whatever. Um, 
and three of them are fucking labels. It's suburban, strange, and psychopathic, and then just the word honor. And I've come to the conclusion, and man, I don't want to get any more labels tattooed on me because the motherfuckers, goddamn, like, God, I never thought I'd see this from psychopathic, y'all. I was going to say, especially, like, you know, and the thing is, is, like, I'll always love and, and have so much love. And, like, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if one day I end up getting a Hatchet Man tattoo. My love for Psychopathic and ICP and the legacy that them two have built will never go away. But I'm not going to lie, doing as of today is just straight shit, you know, like, we all can see it. Like, me and Static were just talking about it the other day, and it's like, you you seriously lost. You know, Twisted was the best, I feel. Twisted was the best on the label. You lost your best label mates. And then on top of that, now, not only did you lose them, you're fucking competing with them. Like, they're giving you a run for your money, dude. Like, how are you How are you letting this happen, you know? The, 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 people, the people that once were sick of being number two have totally proven themselves why psychopathic is what it is today. Because without the help of Twisted, let's just be honest, without the help of them, a psychopathic wouldn't be what it is today. I don't care what nobody says. Twisted and ICP started a psychopathic. I don't, I don't care if it was Violent J and his dream that he had about his six little Joker cards or whatever the fuck it was. Twisted is a big part of that fucking label. And to me... ICP and Twisted started that legacy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's true, man. What do you think on that, Spaz? Uh, I think without Twisted, Psychopathic is not psychopathic. Uh, true. Yeah, yeah, because then there's no, there's no psychopathic in outer space. space and so- a little too late. And I think that if you know your shit, you can see that they're grasping for straws. See, man, look. Yeah, I, they have, like, their core fan base, but, like, I guarantee today, like, with all the shit that came to light with Will Sigler, like, I guarantee they just alienated a good portion of people. Especially the old school fans. Like, I guarantee you a lot of the old school juggalos well, Whatever's like left of the old school fans, I'll be shocked if they're still left. Like, I, I Yeah, really and see, would. like, that's the thing. You know, aside aside from dudes' allegations and shit like that, like, it's hard to say that I'll not be a juggalo. You know, I'll always be a juggalo and always love what they do. And, I mean, it's it's hard to say that I'll keep representing what they do after this, but it's it's just like, you know, like Spaz just said, it'll be surprising to see who sticks around and keeps supporting this movement. If, if for one, if this is the type of people that keep getting brought to the label, and two... If Jay does know about this, then he's just as much of a piece of shit. Just saying. And see, look, that's like I was talking to Spaz earlier. This is, and this is from a motherfucker like Jay that runs the label. Did a track called "Catch a Predator." You know what I'm saying? This is straight up about mm-hmm. learning per- fucking pedophiles and murking them motherfuckers in not even like not like quick, nice, like terrible, vicious. I'm gonna torture you, and I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't see how you. Because I don't see how you make that kind of track and then flip your shit like that, dude. It don't make no goddamn sense, Messin. Well, I seen a post today on Facebook. Uh, somebody had posted up a link, and I don't remember who it was. I, I don't know who it was. I got so many people on the news feed, but I clicked it and checked it out. It was about that dude. And I fucking checked it out, and they're like, all right, look, check this out, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is how statutory rape rape works here here and here blah 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 and fucking what they're saying is that he, for him to be accused of having sex with a, an underage girl at the age of 16 when he was 18 they're like well in the state or whatever he would wherever he was that's not illegal but for him to get that charge the girl had to be at least four years under age yeah. So I mean I don't I don't really know what's going on or what what the whole deal is or what the truth is. The way I look at it is there's dude side of the story, there's chick side of the story, and then the big man upstairs will tell the truth when they have to face the day that they gotta fucking take judgment. 
Man, see, I know uh, exactly the article you're talking about, too, Messing is the funny thing. Uh, look, if y'all want to check that article, I know, hey, hey, fucking Crazy Pain, I'm sorry, I don't know if you care if I throw your shit out there like this, but I'm gonna, because I know Crazy Currents of Crazy Pain, uh, fucking, that I know he posted that shit up, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure I reposted it, well, fuck, I, no, I don't know if I did, because I really wasn't. I'm not trying to get in the middle of all that shit. I guess I will now on air because that's a different story to me. I ain't trying to Facebook this shit, though. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, because fuck that shit. But shit, uh, I'm actually about to get get back to what I was doing. I just wanted to call in and fucking give a shout out to my brother Spaz and fucking say what up to fucking no fucks and let you guys know that I love all you fucking guys. And uh, as soon as this is over, Spaz, hit me up. Hell yeah. Most definitely. We'll hang out tonight, bro. You already know. Hell yeah. Right. That's what's up. Messing mad love, right. dog. M- M- much love. You guys be cool, all right? I'll be in touch. I'll be safe, doggy. One time. All right, late. Hell yeah. Look at that. See, that was, that was messing hanging up that boing. See, that's how I knew we had a caller. By the way, it's bad as that fucking boing shit. It throws me off, but I finally have, like learned to key into it. Yeah, that's just, dude, that is a really fucked up situation, man. I would hope that if there was any other label out there, too, like, they wouldn't let that shit happen. It's, it's fucking, it's absurd at a level I don't honestly understand. But fuck that, man. Enough about this fucking asshole piece of shit motherfucker. Because, um, as far as I can tell, that's what the motherfucker was. And he had a morbid mind on a level that, goddamn, he needed to run into the morbid mind of some motherfuckers like Scum and Spazavelli. Yeah! Check this track. We'll be right back. Chopped and screwed, motherfucker, like he needs to be. You know what it is? Mess and Jam, Monster City, Rhyme Sick. That theory of mind knows what scares you. It has from the very beginning. Don't give it any help, it knows too much already. And you're catching us on the no fucks giving out. Get the fuck out. Yo, check it out, we're back in FCR. Sorry, dog, I didn't mean to cut you off, but, you know, that fucking particular drop was kind of short, but it was Monster City, and that's what's up. That was messing you just heard with us chilling. We still got Spaz Avelli in the motherfucking house. Yeah, and we're gonna flip to some other shit. We're gonna flip to some other shit, dog, right? For real. Um... I want to know, actually, well, yeah, fuck it, we're kind of, no, whatever, it's an odd subject, but he, Messin brought up that whole old school Juggalo thing, and it's a term I've heard a lot since I've really stepped back into this, like I said, there was about a a decade gap, dude, where I didn't go to shows, I still listen to the music, but I didn't go to the shows, I wasn't digging into the underground farther, like, I didn't know who the fuck Scum was until two years ago, you know what I'm saying, and I just intended, I just continued to discover more dope shit, but that's beyond the point, but... I've also come to this term where everybody's like, new school juggalo, old school juggalo, right? I get where it comes from. What do you think the main difference is? And what do you think causes it between new and old school juggalos as they are thus referred? I don't know. I might be the wrong person to ask, bro, because I really stopped listening to ICP after, I don't know, Hell's Pit. So, calm onward, I can give two fucks less about. Um, quiz, I stopped listening after Man's Myth and Mutant. Independence Day never really caught my fancy. I prefer the atmospheric, East Coast sounding shit. And, um, I mean, it wasn't until recently that I started you know, listening to them again. As far as, like, Blaze goes, it was One Less G in the Hood, and then nothing after that. And ABK, it was uh, Hatchet Warrior and Dirty History, and nothing after that. And then Axe Murder Boys, well, uh, we'll just leave that alone. And, um, I mean, I understand they're doing their thing, it's just not my cup of tea, you know? Like, I grew up with, like, Necro, and I grew up with, like, Ill Bill and Nonfiction, and fucking Mr. Hyde, and Cage, and uh, Big L. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I grew up in New York, so it's like the golden era of hip hop. So there's a lot of variety. See, yeah. But, um, you being in New York, you know, like, I think you definitely. I stopped going to shows, I don't know, 2006, and then I started going again as soon as I got out to Denver. Um, and, like, 
you know, it's great to see they're still doing their thing. And, you know, actually, I got to see Murder, Murder with a live band. And, like, that, that was off the fucking hook. You know, it took me back. And uh, basically, I'm just waiting for, like, Twisted to, like, you know, reissue Mirror, Mirror. And, like, you know, I'm like, stoked about Green Book, you know. So it is, it is, but, like, the more recent material, you know, I feel bits and pieces, but not a whole album as a whole the way I used to. Yeah, dog. God, I why man, stop making good points, dog. For real, because I agree. Like Hell's Pit was really their like as far as the Ins and Clampos is concerned, man. Because like I think, and I gave everything up to oh the the missing link, man, the lost and found. Like I, I I like I tried to listen to everything. I think everything before the missing link, those two CDs at least had a good track or two on them. You know, but, dude, with that missing link, dude, I don't know what the fuck they did. And you know what? I, I, man, fuck it. I'm honestly going to say this because I had this thought earlier today. And you know what? I always thought with the Jello and with it being the dark carnival, it was undefined. You know what I'm saying? There was no definition for what the carnival was. So it could be anything you wanted. It was, it was always defined to be something in the afterlife, though. So, you could take that to any interpretation you wanted, regardless of what religion, race, creed, whatever the fuck you were. Right? Yeah. Right. And then comes Shangri-La, and we're all about Christianity and God. Do you think, man, I, I, dude, I really think that fucks something up. Like, right there. Like, the second you put a definition on it, 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 it instantly segregated everything. And then... I don't know, man. I feel, dude, I just feel like it's caused to where, man, I don't even fucking know when I look at it really. Spaz, I don't even know how to fucking explain or describe it. But what do you think that, what do you think the effect of that was as far as them being like the carnival is God? I, I think they immediately isolated around uh, a quarter of your fan base when they said it was about God. Yeah. At that particular time, I mean, hell, like, you know, in St. Quan Posse, played Woodstock in 99, you know. Like, what's the last time they performed, you know, on something of that magnitude? It's, it's been a while. Oh, You yeah. know, and people say, oh, you know, the gathering, and, you know, but it's like that's their own show on their own accord, you know, and it's like, at the same time, it's like, oh, <coughs> That's not what it's about, you know, but at the same time, yeah. you know, and I think it's hard to like Shangri La. Say that shit again, dog. You cut out like a motherfucker. Okay. I said that, um, I think their fan base was at its peak during Amazing Jekyll Brothers. You know, Juggalo fan base was at its peak during the Major Jekyll Brothers. Yeah. And when Shangri-La dropped, it's just been a steady, 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 steady downward spiral. I feel like they keep making bad moves, dog. Like, I feel like... They do. Yeah, they don't... Ever pay. since Alex Abyss, you know, and um, not knocking <laughs> Billy, but... I have to question a lot of what goes on at Psychopathic, and I'm just a little astounded to, to who's letting this happen. <sighs> you and me both, dogs. Fuck that shit, though. Let's find out a little bit more about you, dog. Right? Right? We say you've been doing this shit for a while. You know what I'm saying? You obviously got some serious opinions on this shit, which I appreciate you coming on, for real. Giving no fucks on this motherfucker. I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you just giving no fucks, dog. That's the shit. I love when a motherfucker comes on here. He's like, I, I said always give no I want. Do little thing, bro. Hell yeah. That's what's up. So, man, let's just, like, I got a chance to listen to a couple of your tracks, dog. Like I said, I seen you perform live. This motherfucker puts on a hell of a live show for anyone that knows. You got any live shows coming up here soon? Well, duh. Never mind. I know what you got coming up. This motherfucker's going to be playing Gorefest. Yeah, I see that shit. I seen your name on that card. Yeah, I'm playing day two. Um, and uh, with Lex the Hexmaster and Scum. And uh, it's going to be a dope day. And all three days are going to be dope. Shout out to my boy Insane Poetry from LSP doing his 
on day one with Seth's crew. Um, shout out to Static G, you know. Thank you for the all out of normal tour, bro. And uh, he's doing day one as well. And then uh, you know, there's a bunch of good shit going on all three days. Three days, uh, third day we got Boondocks. So uh, you know, I still have tickets available. Thirteen dollars for day two tickets and twenty five dollars for uh, three day passes if you're within Colorado. You get in free with an out of state ID. Man, look, fuck. I'll tell you. If my state was, like, maybe a state or two closer, I'd come there. But fuck, dog, I live in Indiana. And that's, like, fucking a day drive for real if I just drive straight through. I think it would actually, we looked it up one day. It was, like, an 18 or 19-hour drive to get to Denver from where I'm at. Yeah. That's some shit. I mean, that's not too bad. That's, like, the suicide drive we did at the end of the All Out of Normal Tour, 17, (laughs) 18 hours back from Wisco. (laughs) Yeah, but y'all exchanged, right? I mean, y'all took shifts driving. I mean, it was, what, nine hours straight? And uh, props again, shout out to Stogie for getting us home safe through fucking uh, tornado country in Iowa uh, with the tornado beacons going off on the side of the road. Absolutely great driving. Ten feet of visibility. This motherfucker drove nine hours, eight hours, whatever the fuck it was straight. Holy shit. Got us into daylight, and then we made the switch. Yeah, him and Madison, shout out to both of them. See, but that's the thing. Look, you guys, y'all made the switch. If I was to head down to Gorefest, dude, my wife can't drive right now, so I'm the only one driving. So, two nine hour shifts, stay in between, stay somewhere. That's what I would say, sir, but you're not coming. So, unfortunately, next year. No, look, yeah, hey, look, and like I said, dude, this shit was very sudden. You know what I'm saying? And, I mean, we intend to try and plot it out way better next year. Like, Gorefest is definitely one of the things I'd like to make it down to. I mean, fuck, I'd like to make it down to Denver just in general because there's about, I don't know, 20 or 30 other motherfuckers down there. I'd just like to be like, hey, what's up? And meet in person as opposed to just entering them for interviewing them for fucking, you know, two hours. <laughs> Don't forget the legal weed. Oh, dude, uh, yeah, fucking Damien told me about a Keith Cola. See, like, uh, uh, what, what, man, what do you think of the Keith? Like, what do you think of that shit down there, dog? The fact that you can, for real, like, you can go get a goddamn cola. Get a, she fucked up. Uh, bro, the shatter, the dab, the wax, fucking butt itself. I mean, I come from New York, you know, so it's like, we got great sour diesel out there. That's the only thing that I missed out here in Colorado, some good East Coast sour diesel, but... Everything else just gets me fucking blitzed. It does the fucking job, puts me to sleep, calms my fucking nerves, you know, uh, stops the pain. So, you know, everything is real good out here. Love smoking Keef and Bud. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Bowls of Bud and Keef. See, and you can straight up just buy Keef, can't you? Yeah, buy the gram, buy the half ounce, buy the ounce, whatever the fuck you need. It can be done. Oh, my God. Dude, what do you what do you pay per gram? For a Keith? Uh, no, we'll say yeah, yeah, for Keith. What do you pay for a gram of Keith? Ten a gram, you, and then some fire that'll knock you on your fucking ass. You can fuck the fuck off. What the fuck kind of shit is that? I oh my god, I hate living in this fucking state. Why is this shit? Look, let's ask you a question. You've seen what that's done for the economy down there, right? Absolutely booming. I'm from New York City, which is supposedly the land of ample opportunity and fucking anyone that can make it anywhere. And that's why I'm absolutely loving Denver, because there's real opportunity. There's real money. There's real connections out here. There's real shit to be done and real shit to be made. You know, and shout out to everyone that I've met so far in Denver living out here. You guys have all been hospitable, wonderful and everything in between. Um you know, they, they've pretty much adopted me, and, you know, I really appreciate them for doing that, you know, because I, part I partly moved out of New York due to transplants, and I'm here being a transplant in their city, and they've been nothing but wonderful to me. Hell yeah, dog. And I know you've linked up with some motherfuckers down there, too, dude. Fucking, let's just, so man. I, I've been fucking with since 2003, so it's like, you know, he was a big reason part of why I moved down here, you know. He came, did a show for me, uh, Insane Poetry and the Flatliners in uh, New York City in October, and uh, Lex Master showed up, and that was the day he was announced on FNE. And uh, yeah, we all just kicked it, network, you know. 
and uh, fucking, it was just a really good experience. And um, you know, he really just convinced me that Denver was the place to go. Man. And uh, he was absolutely right. Let's Denver see. is just an opportunity if you know how to play your cards right. Well, let's just drop some information because I know I know you about to be out of Denver at least for a little while. Run it around again, man, again. Look, this, this motherfucker don't. He he lives in Denver. He don't just don't want to stay in one place. But I respect the fuck out of that grind, dog. Because you got that tour coming up with motherfucking Damian Quinn and Insane Poetry, right? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. From September to October, you got to check us out on the road. Dates are going to be posted soon. It's booking right now in case any promoters are listening. Uh, hit up Insane Poetry. The Flyers are around Facebook a bunch. So uh, check it out. And uh, if you're interested in bringing this to your town, hit up your local promoter and tell them to get up off their ass and book the Violent Art Tour with Insane Poetry and Damian Quinn. Hell yeah, man. That'll be a hell of a show because I know... You with them? Man, who, do you know who else they got running that tour with them? I know, uh, I know it's Omen from California, myself, and then I know it's someone else, and uh, I'm blocking on it right now. Insane Post just told me yesterday. Mm. See, now I've heard Yeah, Omen. King and Berserk uh, from Demon Rap, and uh, there's someone else, and I'm still blocking on their name right now. Uh, hey, man. But, it's cause yeah, it's no, it's, it's good. It's because you still in Denver, and you got that good shit. That's why you forgetting, dude. I respect the fuck out of that. You know what I'm saying? It happens, right? And I, I did smoke it. Yeah. Like Spaz is trying to stay in the state. I appreciate that shit, dog, for real. You know what I'm saying? I know if I was in that level. I want to know, though, dude, especially you seeing everything that, that shit's done for the economy down there, right? On a legal level. Why don't you think? Oh, bro. Like, their transit system. Last time I was here, it was 2009. I come back, it's a whole different fucking city, bro. Mm. A whole different city. Well, why do you think it is that they're so hesitant to fucking legalize that on a federal basis? I think, think it boils down to religious views. I think it boils down to people's misinformation. Um, I think it boils down to the miseducation from the DEA to the American public. I think it boils down to the miseducation from our parents to us. Um, you know, and uh, I mean, for fuck's sake, more than 50% of the American populace is smoking marijuana. Like, why not just tax it and fucking make it like tobacco? It could be the new fucking export product of America. Uh, I don't see the profitability, you know, in uh, locking up small-time weed offenders to even large-time weed offenders. It makes absolutely no sense to me. You legalize, you take away the cartel, you know, you get your own fucking source of revenue and you fucking tax it. That's additional source of revenue for fucking schools, additional source of revenue for roads, for fucking health care. You name it, you know, and it just opens up so many doors. It opens up job sectors and jobs for jobs, you know, and like a sector opens any jobs there for a particular reason, you know, energy for the marijuana or marijuana support or security or whatever the fuck. And it all boils down to creating an economy huge deal to this day not saying it doesn't come with its own downsides I'm sure it does you know that's why not everyone owns a dispensary but at the same time like they're providing a very valuable service to the people by you know giving legal weed access here in Colorado and also medical and understanding you know a good guideline which I think is more than fucking reasonable for the rest of the United States to adapt to Hell and yeah. I really think it's just come after fucking hardcore drug dealers, you know, fucking spend your time on that, fucking weapons, whatever the fuck you want to do, but leave weed the fuck alone, you know, it's a fucking plant. No one's chemically making this shit in a fucking laboratory. Nowadays, you know, with all legalization, I mean, all sorts of crazy shit's being done. The point, it's a fucking plant, you know, and it's a concentrate of a fucking plant. You know, like, I'll give you maybe hash, you know, hash is maybe a drug because it's altered by humans and created, you know, unless it's press hash. But still, nonetheless, like, they don't really have much of an argument that it has medicinal properties that are very valid within itself for pain, for depression, for anxiety, for stress, for certain medical conditions. The list is endless. So, like, the point of the matter is it just really seems they just don't want us to take care of ourselves. They want to invest more into big pharmaceutical. They want to have big, big pharmaceutical pump us full of fucking pills, treat us like a fucking lab bill, and then fucking when we get all sorts of diseases from the pills that we take, let's give you more pills. They put us on a regimen. It's a system. We're built to fucking die. 
Hell yeah, dog. I fully agree. It's the kind of shit that gets homicide on my mind. Featuring Ben Graham by Spazavelli. We'll be right back, y'all. That's how to retard and delete that shit. You've just been erased. Yo, yeah, yeah, man. Check it out. This is Static 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 G. Shit just got real. You're here with the unknown factor on No Fucks Given Radio. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? You know where you can find my shit, right? Go ahead. Make my day. Find it on gorehop.com if you're looking for merch. Don't forget. If you're looking for information on me or my label. Jack, what the hell are you doing? I'm Ron Sick. You can find that on ronsick.com and you can find merchandise on myronsick.com. Have you seen my... Facebook.com slash the real static G. YouTube.com slash the only static G. SoundCloud.com slash static G. What the hell is this? And of course, that's S-T-A-T-I-K G every time. So, uh... You will know my name is... Static G. When I lay my... Ron Sick. ...upon thee. Much love to all you motherfuckers that are listening. All the motherfuckers that ain't. Write it down, take a picture, send it to him. Come check it out. <laughs> Better G, and I'm gonna have to sign off. Much love, man. We're live! Back on NFZR, yeah, the no fucks given hour, man. It's been a hell of a fucking time with Spaz Belly, for real. We went all over to this motherfucker. Got into some controversial shit. Say for real, man. That whole tip on that shit is fucked. And that's all I can say about that. We won't go into it no more because we want to find out right now, dog. I want to know what you got coming up, huh? What you what you got coming up? I need I need some more shit, dog, because I like that shit I heard. I want more. Uh, we got the CD Bloodlust dropping. Uh, it's my EP. Then uh, my label's also dropping a sampler showcasing the rest of the talent that's on the label. We're a beefy ass label, Romero. Um. Fucking Hallucinates dropping his album, uh, Hell's Fury. It's a repress. Uh, in my opinion, a horrorcore classic. Uh, people can pick that up. Um, and then next year, we got my LP, and uh, we got vinyl from uh, Insane Poetry dropping. Vinyl? Re-releases of Insane Poetry coming to Rome era on vinyl. Ooh. Is that a vinyl uh, other than there? that, that's pretty much it. That our merch line is getting up as we currently speak. T-shirts, uh, hoodies, uh, jerseys, uh, stickers, bandanas, lanyards, the whole nine, charms. Um, so, you know, hopefully by the Violent Art Tour, I'll have a bunch of that with me on the road, and motherfuckers can come pick that up. Oh man, you gonna have a Rome Air shirt? Oh, yes. White shirts and black shirts with the Romero logo. Oh, well, I have to go black if I'm going to pick one of them up, dog, because I fuck up a white shirt. Oh, yeah. That's just, that's just the truth of it. I don't give a fuck, man. I got me a couple stickers smacked up in the uh, NFGR studio. That's what's up, man. I got mad love for that shit, dog. All right. Now, man, man, run, who's all on that fucking label, dog? Uh, currently, as it stands, we have uh, myself. We have... Um, AD and Rec, uh, who are from Brotherhood Productions in New York. Uh, Brotherhood Productions is no longer existent, so we have uh, their entire back catalog. Uh, we have uh, Ben Graham out of Florida. We got um, his little entourage as well, which includes uh, Street, a.k.a. Tony Johnson, and uh, also includes Tall Man. And uh, we also have uh, Danny P. out of New York. And, uh, fucking, who else am I? We got Hallucinate, and, uh, out in Detroit, Michigan. And, uh, I think that's pretty much everyone. Damn, dog. Y'all are just fucking all over, for real. Yeah, and I'm not gonna drop too much, but we're working out a lot more vinyl distribution deals for classic horrorcore albums. Other than insane poetry, I'm just not gonna drop more than that. But, uh, but uh we're gonna be dropping a lot of vinyl this coming next year and um you know so we just make it a point to bring hardcore to the masses underground hip-hop to the masses that hardcore shit and uh just give people what they want you know limited run small batch you know signed by the artist that type of deal hell yeah dog 
I fully fucking agree. That's what we try and do over here at NFTR. Is just play the dopest shit we can get our motherfucking hands on. You know what I'm saying? I just got to get a hold of the artist so I can be like, yo, dog, can I spin your shit in rotation? Because I ain't trying to be some asinine motherfucker spinning a bunch of shit. I ain't, you know, talk to the motherfucker about because I know that's dumb plenty. You know, I ain't trying to be that motherfucker, though. Um, <laughs> but for real, dog, I know, man, you just looking there, you know, man. You know, you know anybody who wants to come on the show, Spaz, tell them, hit up the wife. Don't hit up me. You hit up me, you'll end up pissed off. Because I'm a dick, y'all. I don't even lie, because I don't give a fuck. And that's what's up. This has been the No Fuck Skipping Hour. Before we cut out, Spaz Belly, you want to give any shout outs? Yeah, shout out to my boy Messin. Shout out to Rhyme Sick, Monster City, Static G, Biscuit. Shout out to all my crew, Romero.